meteorologist Adam Sherwinski is joining me today for another installment of Ask Your Meteorologist. All right, Adam, I have a question for you. What is evapotranspiration? Evapotrans it's a hard word. I was going to say, or corn sweats. We'll just call it corn, corn sweat. sweat. Is, yeah, that's why we call it corn sweat, because saying evapotranspiration a million times is going to be a quite the headache, both for meteorologists and for everybody alike, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, evapotranspiration is basically the process that plants use to get water vapor back into the atmosphere. So when you start having those hot and humid conditions, thank the plants. Now, the thing is, not every plant is as efficient at it as some other plants. All right. And one plant that's really efficient at it Can is, I guess? Yeah. Corn. Oh, corn very much is. You can see corn sweat right there. That's what we've been talking about, how corn increases humidity through evapotranspiration. See how long of a word that is, though? Like trying to say that. Evapotranspiration. It's a lot. I it mean, is a lot. I mean. And so humid, I see, is like right there above the corn, but it's because <laughs> the plants are Picking sort up. of the cornerstone of this mm -hmm. process? So evapotranspiration, a process where plants release water vapor into the atmosphere. Here's the thing, though. Corn, super efficient at it. It's really good at it. Uh, and that's the thing. It's about, what, three to four K gallons uh, per uh, thousand gallons per acre per day. That's a lot. That's a lot. So that's about 1.1 million acres of corn. Uh -huh. Do the math, 45 billion gallons daily. 67,272 Olympic pools a day of moisture. That's a lot of moisture. And that's the thing. Right. We talk about plants. It, corn is a plant. You know, we have this every single year. I cannot tell you how many times I've driven down the road and seen just the fog, the layer of fog over the right. growing corn here. The corn's up, and you'll see it kind of like mist right over there. And there's spots in town where it's like, oh, it looks perfectly fine. You get to the cornfields, yeah. and it starts to get a little bit more of that... Uh, well, and, and not only do we have corn in central Illinois, we have yeah. beans too as well and other vegetation. Oh. So they do the same process, cause it. but these are the really big oomph ones. Well, I was going to ask about that because I've been to other places that don't necessarily even have a lot of crops that are super humid. Southern California. Right. But it's well, not really humid there. It's <laughs> not humid there, but like Florida, for example, like you don't really drive down the road and see corn growing there, but it's so humid. Right. What's causing the humidity there? And that's the thing. There are different ways to get the moisture for us here this time of year when we don't have a lot of pull from the Gulf of Mexico. We do get mm -hmm. pull. I mean, we still get that southerly flow. We get that warm air advection that usually is our typical way of getting it. So we still get the warm air advection, but this is just adding moisture on top of that too as well. That's why you can get it even on days where it's dry, it's sunny. There's no forcing mechanisms. There's no cold front or low pressure system. You sometimes get a lot of humidity in that. Interesting. Get a, get a, a thunderstorm or two. Right. Get enough of a short wave to come through here. So, again, plenty of moisture uh, from that. But with the south down there towards, you know, the Everglades are right there. It's a very tropical environment to begin with. We're not a tropical environment. That's right. the, You get rid of the corn, it changes how our summers are going to be. It would be a little bit more so here. But because of the corn, a lot of Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and uh, even into parts of northern Missouri, the Corn Belt really gets pretty hot and humid this time of year. And a lot of folks kind of don't think about that. They think that all of the Midwest is very standard. Like, you know, it's right. very similar. Like, what, what it is in Michigan and Wisconsin is the same as it's going to be down towards uh, uh, down towards Illinois and Indiana. I was like, hmm, things change once you get in those cornfields. When you right. have a stagnant airflow, where's it going to go? It's going to go and kind of just settle over the region. That's why we get corn fog. That's why we get corn sweat. Again, it's it's really kind of interesting how much moisture they can produce. And, I mean, they're really efficient at it. You know what else is really efficient at producing a lot of moisture? What? Another location on the world. You know, you, you said Florida, and that's pretty close. I and mean, it's uh -huh. a good spot. Right. So what's south of Florida, though? Uh, Cuba? Yeah, south of Cuba. <laughs> I don't we're, know. We're going to a different continent, it's, oh, but it's the continent okay, south going, of us. Keep going, keep going. Okay. What, I what, don't know. What, I need a map. <laughs> what, 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 what's, the, what's, the, what's one of the well, most well-known areas in South America? Um, I think monkeys, drag wires, tropical, tropical, the Amazon I, rainforest, I say, the, the rainforest, rainforest. Yeah. yes, and that's an area that's got really good evapotranspiration too as well. They have the ITCZ, that's a convergence zone where these thunderstorms can form almost daily here, if not almost all the time, right. every single day, it's like clockwork. We don't really have the same process for an like ITCZ or an equator, the equator, but it is still is a, uh, we still have those processes where we can still have that plenty of moisture for thunderstorms. All you need is a slight trigger and you can get those storms to go up pretty well around here because of the moisture. I mean, there's just right. so much humidity. I mean, I'm, sw I'm sweating right now talking about this. <laughs> well, I was going to say, that's the other thing that I've really found interesting is that sometimes even when the air conditioning is on or things like that, 
no windows open. It feels a little bit humid Still. even in the house. Mm -hmm. And then you go outside, it's really humid, mm -hmm. but then you go more toward Chicago or whatever, and that humidity sort of a little bit. peters off when a you get little bit, yeah. right to the edge of the city. Right. Which is uh, interesting. What's interesting about Chicago is that the that's the urban heat island effect. Where well, that's why Chicago gets a little bit warmer than oh, let's say some of the suburbs there. Sure. It, so it, that's a different process though. And, and then colder with the lake effect snow and that's, all that. And that's another different <laughs> problem. We're going to talk about all these different processes. I Every, was going to say. Everyone thinks the Midwest can be kind of boring. I think the Midwest can be really, really fun when you think about weather when it comes to the Great Lakes right. uh, is one thing, the Great Plains. And you know, I just got back from Colorado. And right. so another great place. If you like weather, go to Colorado, especially eastern Colorado in sure. the spring. You'll get severe weather. Colorado is a great state because you can go Rocky Mountain climbing in the morning. Yeah. In the afternoon, you can go storm chasing. Exactly. Literally, that's what you can do. You go hang out in Boulder for a little bit. Go see some of the hikes. Go do some hiking there, and then next twelve hours later, just go right back out to the Lyman and start chasing uh, right. storms. So run the gambit. Right, and out there it's pretty dry out there. I yeah. did remember one summer when we actually went out there, and it was the first time. Even my professor was like, "I don't remember it being ever this humid." It's on the other side of the dry line. Colorado is and he could not remember it being this humid, that humid that year right. in Colorado. But I was just there, very dry, and the only reason we got rained is because we have mountains. That's orographic lifting. I'm not going to get into that because that's usually not an issue here in central Illinois. Right. Well, thank you so much for Look at all these processes to get rain around here. Right? Adam, it's always so much fun when you're here. I learn a ton. Thank you for being here. Well, if you have a question for Adam, you can email him at asherwinski at wcia.com. And you can find us both on social media.